One of the most notorious sites in England has to be the Tower of London. As a fortress it was established following the Norman conquest of England during the reign of William the Conqueror almost a thousand years ago. The oldest part of the tower, the White Tower that sits in the centre, is also believed to have been a place specifically synonymous with torture that occurred inside of the dungeons, with devices such as a rack and the scavenger's daughter being used upon high-profile prisoners such as Guy Fawkes. But there was an execution scaffold found inside of the tower, on the north side of the oldest part, and on this scaffold there would be three queens of England who lost their lives and heads. Two of them were the wives of King Henry VIII, with the notorious Tudor King ordering their executions. But also the tragic nine-day queen, Lady Jane Grey, was executed during the reign of Bloody Mary I. But many people do not realise that the final execution of the Tower took place a lot closer to now than you would imagine, as just over 80 years ago, during the Second World War, a German spy made his way into the Tower's firing range, and he was then secured to a chair and was executed ruthlessly. But what had he done, and why did he become the Tower of London's last victim? Welcome to the Fortress. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Joseph Jacobs was born in Luxembourg in 1898, and it's believed that he had a rather ordinary upbringing and life. However, as the First World War broke out across Europe, Jacobs decided to join up with the German army, and he signed up to fight as an infantry soldier. He rose to the position of lieutenant inside of the 4th Foot Guards, and inside of the army he was very well respected. However, from 1934 to 1937, inside of Switzerland, Jacobs was arrested, and he had been caught selling counterfeit gold, and as the Second World War broke out, he was then drafted into the Wehrmacht to fight for Hitler and the Nazis' ambitions. He was considered an Oberleutnant, however, when the German army discovered about his previous imprisonment for his crimes in Switzerland, he had to resign his commission, and he was demoted to the position of a Feldwebel. But Jacobs was then moved to the Meteorological Service Department of the German Army, and whilst here he became an agent working for the Abwehr, the German Military Intelligence Service. They were involved during the Second World War in spying operations and also sabotage, and they deployed agents in many different countries, but Jacobs was trained as a spy, who would work inside of enemy territory and lands. Jacobs trained in Hamburg in September 1940, and he was schooled in how to work in the field, and during his weekends he would travel back to Berlin. But it wasn't long before he was sent out on a mission, and his destination would be England. It's believed that he was not the most ardent of Nazis, and he considered at one point actually leaving Germany to go and live with one of his relatives in America. But he was said to have been a well-trained spy, and he was given everything he could to succeed. He was then flown in the belly of a German bomber aircraft from Schiphol Airport in Amsterdam, heading for England. On the 31st of January 1941, Jacobs embarked on his mission, but it did not go very well. He jumped out of the aircraft over England at 8.30pm and then parachuted down to the ground. However, his landing was very rough. He landed inside of a potato field and in an area known as Dovehouse Farm. He had broken his ankle when he hit the ground and he spent the next morning trying to figure out his next move. To attract attention, he shot his mouse a pistol in the air, and two farm workers who heard this on their way to work in the fields discovered the German spy. He was then seized by the Ramsey Home Guard, and they then told the police they had a spy in their custody. The police then found a number of different items, including a German wireless transmitter that Jacobs had buried in the soil, and when he was taken to the police station, his code disc was located. He was given some medical treatment for his broken ankle, and he was then held inside of Latchmere House, where he was interrogated by MI5. Jacobs gave over a number of lies and false statements to those who were interrogating him, and the British press reported of his capture. British authorities believed that he would not have worked well as a double agent because of the high-profile media attention, and they then considered what to do with him. According to the Treachery Act, which dealt with spies and traitors, the punishment for a captured enemy spy was that they should be tried by a civilian court and by judge and jury, and that if found guilty their punishment could be death by hanging. If they were said to have been a soldier, then they could be executed by firing squad. Jacobs was a German citizen, and he was a soldier, and was tried by court-martial, which occurred on the 4th and 5th of August, 1941. 
His trial occurred inside of the Duke of York's headquarters in Chelsea, and in this it was legally established that he was an enemy alien, and also an enemy soldier. Many of the spies captured were executed by hanging during World War II, but Jacobs was different. During his proceedings it took just 10 minutes to claim that he was an enemy spy, and then the death sentence was passed against him. He was then sent to Wandsworth Prison to await his execution, but Joseph Jacobs then applied for clemency on behalf of King George VI, but this was rejected and denied, and the death sentence was then finally approved. But Joseph Jacobs would not be executed inside of Wandsworth Prison where he was held. He was to be executed in the same place where many Tudor figures lost their heads, and where three queens of England were executed. The Tower of London during the Second World War did have a military barracks and garrison inside of it. It was here where Anne Boleyn and Catherine Howard were executed by axe and sword, and also where some high-profile nobles, such as Robert Devereux, a favourite of Elizabeth I, were also executed. But the Tower was a feared fortress due to its reputation for execution and torture. There was even a small oubliette-style dungeon called Little Ease, where Guy Fawkes was locked up inside of. On the 15th of August 1941, Joseph Jacobs was transported from Wandsworth Prison under a full military escort to the Tower of London a short distance away. He got to the Tower and was approached by a doctor who promised to provide him with medication to calm and relax him. Jacobs took this tablet and he was then taken to the miniature firing range found inside the inner and outer walls of the Tower. Today this structure still roughly stands and it looks like a shed but it was inside here where a number of enemy German spies were executed during the First World War in exactly the same manner. Jacobs was led into the firing range and stood there where his execution firing squad with their rifles by their sides. Specifically the men who were going to shoot him were from the Scots Guards. They had been given Lee Enfield rifles and some men had blanks in their weapons. Joseph Jacobs was then led into the firing range and he was sat on a brown Windsor style chair in the centre of the room, and he was then tied to this, and a blindfold was placed over his eyes. A soldier then pinned a circular target over his chest and heart, showing the soldiers where to aim. Joseph Jacobs then uttered his final words, shoot straight Tommies, asking his executioners to dispatch him quickly. The eight men firing squad then stood with their rifles pointing at the German spy, and three of the weapons had been given a blank. Five of these weapons had live rounds, rather than just the one to make sure that the former spy died quickly. At 7.12am the firing squad were ordered to fire, and their bullets instantly killed Joseph Jacobs. A post-mortem investigation was ordered of his body, and it was shown that one of the bullets went straight through his heart, and the other four had struck the area around his chest. He was then buried in a grave in a close-by Catholic cemetery. Today Joseph Jacobs is remembered for being the final person who was executed inside the walls of the Tower of London. He was executed 400 years after Henry VIII's wives lost their heads inside the walls of the very same fortress. But in the future, if the need for executions of spies and military officials and enemies was ever there, then the Tower of London could yet again become a site of execution. The execution of the German spy was carried out ruthlessly and efficiently, and to many people in Britain, his execution was one which was seen as necessary during the Second World War to prevent spies gaining the upper hand. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.